Okay, time to get started. I need to check ev anywhere that might have been imported from one end to the other. Just need to do what I always do. Check the chickens. Are there still five? Chicken in the chicken coop. There's only four. Huh? Four? Maybe he never got them. <laughs> <coughs> huh? What's going on, Makoto? Oh, I'm glad you're here. Listen, do you remember how many chickens there were in here? Of course, there were precisely five. Yeah, right? Hmm? What's wrong? There's only four chickens here now. We're one short. Huh? Four is the number of death. Okay. That's so weird. I wonder when it happened. I was down here just before nighttime last night, and there were definitely five chickens then. What are we gonna do? Going for five to four is that gonna have an impact on the structure of the world. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. If even a single piece disappears, the entire world will remain unfinished. This is my best to ignore here and focus on the problem at hand. Why did one of the chickens disappear? Could it have been related to the case? <laughs> uh, we're talking about conk. <laughs> These look like fragments of something. They're all burnt, so I can't really tell for sure, but... I'm not sure what that is, to be honest. I feel like I've seen this somewhere before. But where? Was it there? I'll have to double-check that later. I'm gonna be honest, I don't actually recognize that. Yeah, I know. There's a knife laying on the ground. I didn't recognize it either. Is this? It must be the knife that was stuck to the body before it exploded. The force of the explosion must have thrown it two feet away from the body. Weird. <laughs> really surprised it's not in that main plan or something. The Monokuma file said the knife went all the way through the body from front to back. Does that mean the knife is what caused the fatal injury? Either way, the, this knife, it looks really familiar. Wait, is this? That's it. It's the knife that person was holding. This is getting really weird. There are just too many strange coincidences. Whoever this person in the mask is that was that attacked me last night, they were holding that knife. And the same knife was used to stab that same masked attack will be found here. So maybe this masked person got stabbed because... When they attacked, I was in some kind of trance. Maybe I reacted by grabbing the knife. And maybe then I... I stabbed them, and they walked four flight, five flights of stairs to get up. No. No. Four? Four flights of stairs. Yeah. And if this really is Kyoko, it would mean Kyoko is the one that attacked me. But why the mask? I just don't know. I don't remember anything clearly from last night. No, no, it can't be. There's no way. from his death seemed to disorganize, in other words, a pretty stereotypical tool shed. Is this a tarp? Wait, was there a tarp in here before? You should probably look at, into that. It could be directly related to the case. The top is wet and covered with mud and grime, but the underside is totally clean and completely dry. One side of the tarp is wet and dirty, something about that bothers me. That means it had to be after 7.30 in the morning. That's the one thing in here that concerns me. Yep. Maybe then I'll find for sure if Kyoko or not. If it's Kyoko or not. First off, she definitely didn't have this. Or Did she wear gloves? She wore gloves. Oh, okay. I still don't... I say, how do you know that? I, 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 ha I had to think about that. Actually, wait, was she there during the naked scene? The what scene? The bathhouse scene. Yeah, yeah she was. She was, remember, she was, like, dead-ass looking at you guys. Looking through the mm -hmm. door, like she knew you were there. Yeah. Um, I'm just thinking about it. What, I don't think she was wearing her gloves there, was she? I don't remember. I don't think you could see her feet. I'm not sure. But I want to make the claim that she had nothing on her hand. I don't think this is Kyoko. There's something weird about the body's fingernails. Oh, oh, these are fake nails. They're really long. They seem like they'd get in the way of normal activity. 
definitely not Kyoko. <laughs> but that is like a detective thing, right? It's a detective star kind of thing? The wolf? Mm. Is it? I, I don't know. That's why I'm making a claim and gonna check it later. There's also something on the back of her right hand. Is that a tattoo? It got burned so I can't make up the whole thing, but it looks like it's a picture of a dog or something. I've never seen anything like it before. It reminds me of like a Sheriff Star thing. The white jacket the victim was wearing got totally burnt up. There's only one little piece left. The lower half of the body didn't get wet at all. After the body blew up, the top half got set on fire, so I dumped a bucket of water on it. Which explains why the bottom half isn't wet. There's nothing strange about that, right? Hey Gabe, just a little thing. Uh, hmm. So I looked it up. No, you cannot see Kyoko's hands. Damn. She's got her back face and you and her hands are like together in front of her. Okay. The upper half of the body got set on fire in the explosion, so it's totally blackened. <laughs> oh, we found the blackened, guys! Also, the top half of the body is wet. That's because it got set on fire and threw water on it. A real good question, though. Seriously, where did Biaki get the bucket of water? Since I only threw water on the part that was on fire, the top half, the bottom half is still dry. In other, in other words, there's nothing strange about the top half being wet. There isn't, right? 7.30 in the morning. Exploded body analysis. Nothing else I can investigate? No. Oh. I've been waiting a while. Monokuma flower, huh? If, is it true? Did it? Does it really eat paper, plastic, and people? Anyway, I don't think it's related to the case, so I think I'll just stay away. Okay. If you want to get rid of a body, typically you dump it in like the flower or something. What would happen if no one found the body? We would just go on with an art communal laugh. <laughs> well, what happens if two people, like, a person kills two people, dumps their body in the flower so they're never found? Like, anyone, no one can kill anyone after that point, or else they're breaking the school regulations. Just saying. I mean, they're not. They could, they could kill people if they wanted. Well, no, you can only, there's only two murders per case. They set to turn over, turn on at 7.30 of the morning. Monokuma said the time possibly couldn't be changed. Huh? Hold on. So the sprinklers turn on at 7.30 each morning, right? Then if the body was here before then, the sprinklers should have gotten it wet. Which would mean the murder must have taken place after or that tarp was used. Good timing, Makoto. I have to talk to you. What do you want to talk about? And I'd like to hear your alibi. Alibi? Correct, I'd like to hear where you were after nighttime began last night. Um, when I was sick, so I was asleep all night. But why are you asking about that now, and what's nighttime got to do with it? Isn't it obvious this murder took place after nighttime? How can you know that for sure? Just because just after nighttime began, I came to the garden. I was going around looking for everyone so I could talk to them about Monokuma. He was been spending most of his time in the garden the last few days, so I figured he'd be here, and I can confirm that when I arrived last night, there was no body here. So the murder could only have taken place at some point during nighttime, after I left the garden. However, Toko, Hiro, Hina, and I were at the gym together the entire night last night. What? Once I found Hiro in the garden, we immediately went to Toko and Hina's room to get them. At that point, we all went to the gym and began dismantling Monokuma. As a precaution, we made sure not to go anywhere alone. We even went to the bathroom in pairs. In other words, all four of us have airtight alibis. The only ones who don't have alibis are me and Kyoko. And if the victim really is Kyoko, then I'm the only one who, without an alibi. And when we went to go eat Hina and Toko, we stopped by your room as well. But you never came to the door, so where precisely were you? I'm telling the truth. I was in my room. But I was dead asleep. I had a fever, so... That's hardly an alibi. I know. 
So what now? You seem to be quite the disadvantage here. I'm the only one without an alibi. That's really bad, isn't it? He told us, though. He made it quite clear the situation I'm in, so, you know, defend myself, bitch. Byakuya's account. In previous games, he would have hidden that. Oh, he could use it against us. It's 11 o'clock right now. Okay, and? Oh, well, I was just thinking about when we first found the body. When the body was found, huh? I should look back at what I did this morning to help me remember when that was. Monkuma's announcement woke me at 7 o'clock as usual, and I headed to the dining hall pretty soon. Once I got there, I met up with Hina. That was right around 7.30. Actually, to be fair, no, that's incorrect. Uh, Hina was alone for a little while. I, do, do I think that she could have killed somebody in that period of time? No, but she was alone for a little while. Then I headed to the gym where everyone else was waiting. Next, Toko went to get the pickaxe, and that's when she found the body. When time was it then? To okay, so Toko was a little, you know, by herself for a bit. Now that you mention it, I think you're right. So, I think we can safely say the body was found at 9am. Okay, my job's done. That's a pretty small job. Hey, Aoi. Listen, Koda. Do you remember how the body looked, you know, before it blew up? Um, if I remember right, it was wearing some kind of mask and a big white coat. Also, there was a kind of knife sticking out of the stomach, and the area around it was stained with blood. Apparently, the wound had stopped bleeding, but the blood on the body was still wet. Byakuya said not to touch it to avoid getting all bloody, but for how much blood there was on the body, I didn't see any on the ground around it. Wow, thanks! That was a big help! Now, how did you explain it? I totally remember how it looked. Well, having to talk about it like that helped me remember it a lot better, too. So, thank you, too. Body before the explosion. Yeah, so, the thing is that the jacket was covering the person. And the mask was just kind of laid over. So they weren't wearing it like they were last night. So, mm, that's great. Could be Kyoko. Okay, okay. I think I've checked everything I need to in this area, but I'm not done yet. There are other areas I need to check. Specifically this fragment I found before. There's somewhere I need to go in to confirm my suspicions. And I still need to find out more about Kyoko. Is that corpse really Kyoko? If that's true... Was that also Kyoko who attacked me last night? If I can find out more about her, maybe I can answer that question. Kyoko was never the kind of person to talk about herself all that much. Maybe if I can get into her room, I'll be able to find out more. But the key to her room is in Byakugan's hand. I don't have a choice. I have to see if he'll let me borrow her room key. Hey, um, Byakugan, if you if you do come up with an alibi, I'd be happy to hear it later at the class trial. Oh no, it's not about that. You have the key to Kyoko's room, right? I was hoping I could borrow it. I'm afraid I can't take that risk. You are the prime suspect, after all. Of course, if I were to go with you, that would be a different story. Then will you go with me? Sorry, I have my own agenda to take care of. Find me again later and we'll see. Depending on my mood, I may go with you or I may not. Come back later, huh? Okay, then in the meantime, I should go look around somewhere else. Maybe I should check out that one area. Hint, hint, hint. Okay, so do you need a hint? Where to go? Um, is it relating to the gym? Yeah. Okay. How I even came up with that kind of bullshit? No idea. I was really expecting that to be gone, to be honest. Was it in the entryway? I figured it wouldn't be here. Sick. Found something, what is it? Yeah, so it's the casing of the bomb. That's not great. It's not great. What do you think it caused the explosion? And that bomb went missing. There's no doubt about it. The fragments I found in the garden. So the bomb had to be placed there after. That's the problem I have here. Okay, I've checked everything else I can think of. All that's left now is Kyoko's room. I should head back to the garden and ask Byakugan. That's my issue. 
is that, just that in general. I guess Monokuma could have done it with his secret passages, but if it wasn't Monokuma who did that, that either means we're missing somebody running around the school, or one of us planted the bomb. And that's not something I want. You think you can go soon, Byakuyan? You want to check out Kyoko's room, right? Very well, let's go. Uh, wait for me! Byakuyan walked off with, without a single glance, second glance, and I hurried after him on our way to the dorms. For most people in this hallway. Yeah, but um, I'm actually paying respects to him. So, you know, like half the people in this hallway. Well then, here we go. Biakin took out the key and slid into the keyhole, and then, click. And it's open. I would have laughed so hard if it didn't work. <laughs> if Kyoko fucked with him by giving him a fake key. How upset do you think he would be? <laughs> It's just like he does it, it doesn't work. He walks over to Sayaka's room and it opens, he's like, motherfucker. <laughs> she just stole the key during that trial. <laughs> Looks like it, thanks. It would severely hinder our exploration. Wow, okay, she has a boring room like us. So this is yeah. Kyoko's room. <laughs> Mmm, Kyoko's bed. Here's her bed. I don't see anything interesting here, at least not as far as the case is concerned. Can't check her. Okay. I wanted the sewing kit. I wasn't trying to talk to you. In particular, I thought we might find some kind of clue here. A clue that might help us understand Kyoko. You can't be serious. That's why you made me take time out of my search to come here? Sorry. Regardless, if you plan on poking around at random, you're doomed no matter how much time you take. Surely you have something more concrete. Something to give us some sort of direction here. More concrete. Oh, I know! Earlier Kyoko gave me something. I'm sure I have it here somewhere. Found it. What's in the envelope? Kyoko gave it to me. She said if something ever happened to her, I should open it. Well, something certainly has happened, so open it. Okay. I opened the envelope and looked inside. Inside was a single piece of paper. Under the sheets. Hey, I checked the right place. That's all that was in there? I noticed that and I was just like... <laughs> hey, yeah, it looks like it. Under the sheets, what could it be? But could something be hidden in the bed sheets? Part of me didn't expect to find anything, but as I lift up the sheets, I found a key. What's this? I found a crumpled up piece of paper. Hang it. Nice. Mikuri Kasaba, the 16th student hidden somewhere in the school. <laughs> Pierce Mikuri Kasaba's profile. Like all the ultimate despair. Why yeah. Her? Yeah. Well, he looks like it. That's probably the only thing Kyoko stole when she snuck into the headmaster's room along with the key. God, you're so annoying. Fine, I'll tell you. It's a key and a beep. This must be the blank that Monokun was talking about. Kyoko said a death without meaning wasn't appealing, and this is what she left behind. I don't have time for your sentimental indulgences. Hurry up and finish your search. Okay. I made an effort to pull myself together and look down at the profile sheet. Name Mikuri Kusaba. Sex female. The ultimate soldier. Hmm. That's not what we were told. Although small for her age, she was a military specialist trained in every weapon type imaginable. She showed an interest in the military from childhood and soon found herself completely absorbed in it. In elementary, she won a survival game tournament and began writing for military magazines. Just before entering middle school, she, while she and her family were on vacation in Europe, she disappeared. The story of a... Also, I mean, Gabe, to be fair, she had to be an ultimate something that would get her admitted to the school. The school wouldn't admit the ultimate despair. I mean... They... They, they, they admitted us. The ultimate lucky student. They wouldn't admit the ultimate despair. Eh, I mean, it's an ultimate. Didn't really say there had to be something good. And that's fine, but... Yeah, but they don't, they don't fuck with their shit. I mean, they admitted us, who, well, also, we... Also, I like how it said she survived a survival game when she was in elementary school. Did she go through, like, a fucking elementary school hunger games? 
we're not talking about that. The story of a young Japanese girl being kidnapped quickly took over Japanese media outlets. An intense international investigation turned up no information and she was never found. However, she reappeared in Japan three years later, alone and completely unannounced. She revealed that she had joined a mercenary group known as Fenrir for those three years. Fenrir. Dog. Got it. So it is... Cool, but okay. I'm talking about the hand thing. Yeah. Yeah. Dog. Who cares? <laughs> They're canines. Fine. Canine. That better? She insists that she had been kidnapped, that she'd received battle training of her own volition. However, she never really, she never revealed why she decided to return home when she did. Mikuru's profile has been added to the Truth Bullets section. The ultimate soldier, a mercenary group, this doesn't feel real. The world I grew up in, it's like a completely different dimension. It's like one's non-fiction and the other's sci-fi. There's no way to even compare the two. That's how different this is. That was how I saw things as just an ordinary person, but then... I never imagined I would hear the name Fenrir in a place like this. Huh? I mean, it's, you know, it's figure in Norse mythology, so. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but we haven't been running into Norse figures here, so it makes sense. Huh? You recognize it? The Fenrir Mercenary Group Corps is a uh, collection of battle-crazed warmongers. But they do have their uses, and they always get the job done. That's worth remembering. This is all part of a world totally removed from the one I live in. I have to say I'm intrigued. Every rumor I've heard says that Fenrir is already... No, oh, I feel like our hero is becoming a bit player. A bit player and a bit player is becoming our hero. It's you. Huh? What have you got in your pretty little hands there? Oh, you found her profile? So, what if we did? Don't freak out at me. I'm not going to hold it against you or anything. In any case you're wondering, I don't hold it against Yoko either, even though she stole it and hid it. After all, there's no rule against stealing, is there? But who I can't forgive is Miss Ogami. He broke the rules and busted into the headmaster's room. Maybe I'll drag her corpse out here and splice up and devour it. Bears are omnivorous, you know. Stop that, Blair. <laughs> Sorry. She's going after my Ritz crackers. A rules violation so unforgivable. You're quite adamant about those regulations of yours. Of course I am. A proper school life is built on the dedication to organization and order. Which is why even I, as the school headmaster, have to fold fucking hell. Have to fold the regulations myself. Oh, so you're saying you have to fold your own rules as well? Absolutely, I can't have you complaining about how unfair it all is, now can I? In fact, even the subject of fairness, would you like to know something interesting? Interesting. It's about the one writing with all the rules. They're actually one of the participants in the kill in this killing game. I don't think I ever told you how many participants there actually were, did I? I was thinking I should probably clarify that. When you all first got here, to oh, first got together in the main hall back then, there were 15 people there, right? I think that means meeting may I think that first meeting may have led to a little misunderstanding among you amongst you all. Yeah, fucking can't talk. A misunderstanding? Are you saying? That's right, there weren't actually 15 of you. The total number of students taking part in the killing game was actually 16. I mean, 16, we didn't question then. that when we got down to the, tr to the trial room, that you were just like, nah! It's just an extra seat! Yeah, you literally told us that there's just an extra chair, there was a mistake. Don't even start with me. I mean, this bear's known for doing some shit and then lying about it. Lying hidden somewhere in the school. The one they call the ultimate despair. Watch out for her. 16th student Mikuru Kasaba. Ultimate despair. She's part of the school life. So the one I'm making all the regulations is... Did you say something? Why are you telling us this? Oh, well, because... I like I told you, this killing game is desperately popular. You wouldn't believe the ratings. And since we got so many viewers now, I wanted to make sure everyone was on the same page. I don't want to wake up to a hurricane of complaints and hate mail, you know? Makes sense. Okay, that's all you get for now. Oh, actually, I do have some revenge to get, so I have an extra bonus for you. Revenge? I want to get back at that sneaky Miss Geary Geary, so I'm going to share a little secret with you. Seriously? You know what she... You know how she te wears those stupid gloves day in, day out all the time? Well, don't tell me I've told you, but she wears them to cover a bunch of hideous scars that she wouldn't want anyone to see. What? Okay, now that's all you get. 
<laughs> yeah, that's just to confuse things. Uh, it The Fenrir tattoo is only need to know that that is Mikuri Kasaba, 16 student, blah, 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 blah. I mean, but, it's also proof that that's not Kyoko. Why? scars on the sandscape? Uh, no, not from the top, from the backside, but also, apparently, this body is covered in wounds. No. So, that would be a hint towards that. No. Oh. You saw the hand, and that uh, was uh, give me a second, I made a mistake. Oops, that's gonna be something Gabe has to fix in the future. What? Hmm. What? Uh, fucking hell. Uh, my audio is recording into the video, so I'm gonna have to try to fix that. Fuck. Great. Good job, Gabe. Monokuma's account has been added to the Truth Bullet section. I don't know what that means. Uh, I made a mistake while recording, and now I'm gonna have to fix it in post. Kyoko wears those gloves to cover a bunch of, bunch of scars. Wait, so on the back of her hand... The tattoo. Wait, but no. Monokuma specifically said there were scars, right? And that's why Kyoko wears the gloves to hide the scars. Well, like I said, the scars could literally be on the uh, on the palm of her hand. Which means... Those fake nails on the corpse... Hmm. Are you thinking about Kyoko again? Huh? What? Forget about her. What matters right now is uncovering Monokuma's trap. His trap? God must have really hated you to make you so dull. Don't you remember what Monokuma just told us? He said there were 16 students, right? Which means Mon Mukura was a student here. Obviously, Monokuma was trying to tell us that Mukura is the one creating the rules to the game. But why would he tell us that, and why now? He said he wanted to make things clear so there wouldn't be any complaints later. But the mere fact that he said that proves Mukura is connected to this case. That's why Monokuma revealed the existence of a 16th student. He needs to make... Our investigation fair. Mikuru is related to the case? It's certainly possible. Perhaps she's the one that killed Kyoko. What? Hmm. That would explain why we have to have a class trial, wouldn't it? If she's a student and she killed someone, that would make her a part of the school killing game. Mikuru is the killer? She killed Kyoko? Hmm. Anyone should be able to come up with that conclusion, don't you think? In fact, that's exactly why I thought when the investigation first began. But based on what Monokuma just told us, I've changed my mind. Mikuru Saba isn't the culprit. Huh? What makes you say that? Hmm. We thought Mikuru the Ultimate Despair was the Mastermind's true identity. But if that's true, Monokuma's behavior makes no sense. Why would the Mastermind go out of their way to reveal themselves to us? That's a good point. So in Mikuru giving us information that should raise questions about her would be bold, to say the least. It makes more sense than to assume that Mikuru isn't the culprit. So that's the trap. They want us to suspect Mikuro and come to the wrong conclusion. Hmm. That's what makes sense to me. The way you said it definitely does seem possible, but if that's really true, Mikuro isn't the killer, then who is? 